Hello, everybody. Welcome back to DSL Hearthstone Legendary Series. We're about a little less than halfway through our final group of the Redemption Tournament, and we're about to jump into our first semifinal between Amaz and Tom60229. Yep. Amaz Good got old a Tom. Mm -hmm. Good old Dan. Good old that's Tom. That's racist. Tom60229. <laughs> that's racist. That's, that's racist. Tom60229. We saw him beat Caldy earlier. It was a very quick matchup. Only lasts about 20 minutes. Three to zero. Amaz got a buy into the semifinals because of his performance in week number four of the Legendary Series, where he took second, only losing to Raynad, who we will be seeing in that uh, in the land finals. So this should be a really great matchup. Yeah, I think Amaz is starting to get recognition again uh, at an appropriate level. A lot of people used to say, you know, Amaz was the RNG king, so of course he would win because he'd have these amazing streaks of luck through Ragnaros hits or the proper draws or the great thought steals. And then uh, when he got a lot technically better at the game, instead of relying on those situations where he hit the coin flip, he ended up starting having worse results. Uh, it could be the lineups, it could be the metagame, it could be just variants that ends up catching up to him. And now, all of a sudden, his play has really caught up to the point where now he's starting to streak, swing back in his streaks of good RNG. And it ends up being this place where he's a good player now, and uh, he's starting to have some of that fortune come back to him. And that's probably the scariest type of Amaz to face off against. Mm -hmm. Honestly, feel like Amaz is playing the best Hearthstone of his career at the moment. Yeah. Meanwhile, Tom is solid as a rock. Yeah, he is. He is like a good old Chevy truck. <laughs> Rip it, ears. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even know you could go that high. I can go really high, baby. That was really impressive. Yeah, Thank Moss you. actually had one of the best performances out of any player across any of the Legendary Series regular weeks. Uh, yeah, I think we've been seeing a lot of good consistency coming out of Tom um, throughout every qualifier and tournament he's ever played for. You're just looking at ESL, you look at Viagame, Game, you look at how he's tried to qualify for almost everything that's available to him. He's one of the hardest working guys uh, in the Taiwanese scene. I believe that he also is still just playing as a student. I don't want to, uh, please don't quote me on that. Okay. But um, I believe that he is still like playing in his free time and he's a university student or something equivalent to those things. Because when I was casting in Taiwan with Nimsh last year, that was what I was believed I was told. So. Maybe he's starting to transition a little bit more. I mean, he's been on a team. He's wearing all those sponsor logos and showing that he's, he's pretty serious about it. But he's going to start things off. We have Patron Warrior versus what looks like to be the mid-range hunter. And that is a terrible hand for Amaz. Yeah. This was the deck that Amaz just absolutely destroyed with in week number four. Uh, he opened it with it in every single match, and he took a quick win with it in every single match. Like, even in the finals against Raynad, his, his hunter just, like, took, like, a quick, like, four-minute victory. So he's very comfortable with the deck. It's giving him a lot of success. Well, he's going to need some help off these web spinners, like a uh, Stampeding Kota would be great. Bukla is kind of average, considering that it, um... Yeah, you don't really want to be giving those bananas over too much to things like Acolytes of Pain. But, um, or even Grim it, Patrons. It's it's okay if your opponent... Yeah, true. <laughs> oh my goodness, you're so right. But it's okay um, for Tom, because no matter what, he's got Execute here. Yeah. I mean, the biggest thing can make this is a 3-5. Right. So, it still trades really well, and I believe that was a Freezing Trap. Yeah, and the freezing trap means that Whirlwind is the activator here. Not a bad play. He gets to activate the Acolyte of Pain, activate the Execute as well. Mm -hmm. And then the Stable Ghoul becomes uh, live as a defense mechanism. But in general, I think Amaz is well aware of what, how rough this matchup can be. Now, Coin Houndmaster on the Web Spinner. That is some real good... Uh, way to bounce back onto the board, followed by Lothab. Yeah. I mean, Rage Hunters, they aren't punished as hard for not having a good opening hand, as long as their opponent doesn't have a really crazy start, especially with Grim Patrons. They can still put out a lot of pressure. Um, turns four, turns five, turns six, even if they sort of whiff on those first three. The cards like Houndmaster, Pauded Shredder, Lothab, Savannah High Mains. 
but it gives the warrior opportunity to start drawing into uh, things that help them deal with it. And even though Savannah High is difficult to deal with, if they do have means, like Execute and then Warsong Commander Grim Patrons, they can use those Hyenas to sort of activate and make a board full of Patrons. Well, that is an intimidatingly strong and stable goal. A Tundra Rhino comes out, and that is kind of exactly what the Doctor ordered here. Shuts down the Unstable, <laughs> and now it goes straight into the, uh, <laughs> the Frothy Berserker. And now a high mate next turn comes out with Charge. Although, I guess he just used Acolyte Whirlwind. Yeah. And draws a card. Tom's head went a full 90 degrees oh. towards the left. Perhaps to use Grim Patron Whirlwind now. Yeah, Hunters don't have that many ways to deal with multiple Grim Patrons. Just because unleashed their normal AoE type clears with Knife Juggler Unleashed the Hounds mm -hmm. is just obviously way too hard to use. Fair enough. Tom's like, yep, you use that kill command. Yeah, that's his best tool to fight against a Grim Patron. That's only one of them. Well, I guess you could start using your Horsong Commanders here and just uh, slam down and start spawning a bunch of Grim Patrons. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's cute. Yeah, that's why he oh, actually gets right. more. He gets another one. Mm -hmm. Ah, that's really cute then. I like that. That was cute. I mean, beyond cute, it was it was correct play. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna. I thought it was slamming the the Leoc. If you slammed the Leoc, he wouldn't really be, have been able to make use of anything on the board. Well, he would have killed the Leoc, and then it would have uh, only spawned one patron as a result. Oh, okay. Well, Maz definitely wants to take care of these patrons as fast as he can. The Warzone Commander mm -hmm. is also quite frightening. Can't really play Dr. Boom because he could just right, force you into a situation boom bots. Yeah, where he just procs more Grim Patients off of his Boom Bots. The only way it could work in his benefits is if he plays boom, Dr. Boom, the Grim Patron hits into the first Boom Bot and it kills off the Warzone Commander. Yeah. Or it kills off the second Grim Patron that's supposed to get charged. Yeah. That's the only way. And that's a one in a two in five. Mm -hmm. Huh. Okay. It essentially cuts off the Grim Patient from having any other copies from this point on. It's interesting, though. A lot of times you... It's more beneficial to kill the Warsong Commander. It, it prevents more damage a lot of the times. Because this gets rid of the activation for Grim Patrons, but keeping the Warsong right. Commander on the board allows him to immediately use whatever card that he's going to have. That oh, 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 my God! And Maz is going to be pissed. Reached up to the shelf and took that one off the top. Did he use a stool? Nope. Tom's got long arms. Armor made to fit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Why did you raise your eyebrows? Well, I'm just really glad you said arms. Okay. Armor Smith. As opposed to how to shut down. TJ, please. It's going to be shutting down a lot of the aggression here uh, in terms of damage, but it doesn't really matter. It's just something on the board. And that combination, the Unleash the Hounds, Knife Juggler, is exactly what Amaz needed. And it's landing onto the minions, which is all good news. This hits the Grim Page, and that's... Whoa! Whoa! That might even... That allows him to kill off the Armorsmith now. Yeah, one by one, though. He gained right. an absurd amount of health in the situation, but he doesn't really have a choice. Because mm -hmm. those mounts are going to die. those dogs don't really do anything except damage to the face. Yeah. All right, well, Tom draws battle rage number two. He's going to be drawing a lot of cards. Opponent uses both, uh, both kill commands. His best shot right now to deal with the Falling Berserker is through a quick shot. Yeah, I'm, I mean, Amaz is at nine health. So he's taking a lot of damage yeah. over the course of trying to remove oh all, these, all this stuff. And These battle readers have been insane. In the membrane. <laughs> well. That was a 90 saying. I know. 
Pilot Shredder is not going to do anything. Amaz taps out, and that's game number one over to Tom. 6 0 2 2 9. And I think this might. I'm starting to get a weird feeling, TJ. It's, it's, it's starting to bubble up a little bit in my stomach. It hasn't gotten to the heart just yet, so it's right here. And uh, it's, it's that we had two Taiwanese players in season one. And you know what, TJ? I think we're going to have two Taiwanese players in season two. It's definitely looking like it's going to be a possibility. To. Yeah. Yeah. And those Taiwanese players in season one were pretty success successful. It was Pinpico and Waifu yeah. were the two. And it would be two different ones in Roger and Tom. And they all actually played quite well together. Pinpico actually served as our translator for Roger yesterday in a lot of the yeah, that was interviews helpful. that we did. That was helpful. Thanks, yeah. Pinpico. Yep. Uh, in the process, I don't think Tom is on Way Spider. I believe he's on a different team, right? Yeah, but they still practice they still together. help each other, yeah. talk to each other, chill. Mm -hmm. Great players. Roger was actually streaming earlier today, this morning, on Twitch. And, you know, th like, I think a thousand people were watching him. So yeah. that's good stuff. Yeah. He, he, he actually streams a lot. Taiwanese players getting recognition. Yeah. He streams a lot. He just doesn't stream to many viewers, which is kind of a shame because he's one of the best players. I, I thought after uh, his top, his high finish, he finished second at Sea Story Cup. I thought that he'd get a, quite a bit of oh Vi game sorry yeah. um, I thought he'd get a quite a bit of recognition and uh, start seeing more um, popularity in the in the West but it didn't work out that way so I'm glad that he's he's going to be making it to the finals but uh, moving on to the next game here between Amaz and Tom it is going to be Tom breaking out that warlock and Amaz is going to try him one more time with the hunter and this matchup a little bit better for the mid range hunter. This was the standard handlock from Tom. Yeah, the, yeah. the demon handlock was from Limujux. There doesn't seem to be anything particularly too different about it. Uh, in the meantime, that hunter is pretty standard run of the mill mid range. I don't think we've seen. Oh, there's a snake trap. I'll say. I don't think we've seen anything too interestingly different about it than normal. But the snake trap's a good mix up once in a while. Can't just keep throwing the same one-two punches every single time as the hunter. I wouldn't even mind seeing a snipe, but that's just. Yeah, I don't know about that. We did see a snipe earlier in the week from. Oh, I can't remember. A player. From a player. That's right. That participated in the redemption series. That's right. And we only saw it once because that player did not win. That's right. So. I'm not sure. It does well against Grim Preaching Warrior if you play it well. And that's like it. In a situation like this, winning is almost everything, though, so you're right. <laughs> no turn one play from Amaz. No real play from Handlock. So they, let's just start on turn two. Mad Scientist comes to the hand. That is the most damage possible. And Amaz chooses to go ahead and play it. You don't necessarily need to play the Haunted Creeper to get something out sticking onto the board. Handlock's not going to... Well, chances are they're not going to Dark Bomb that Mad Science. It's very rare mm -hmm. to do so. Now, with three mana, you could develop the Equal Horn Bow, which fits much nicer. And that way, next turn, you can also weave in the Hero Power plus Haunted Creeper. And like you say all the time, TJ, getting in that two mana Hero Power from the Hunter is so key to winning this matchup. Yep. And also... You get synergy with the secret and the bow. But a lot of times you don't even use that. But yeah. I had a really good way of explaining it the other day with the hero power. Oh, snake trap! That's interesting. Well, I guess he just wants to kill off the ancient watcher. Yeah. I mean, eventually he, he feels like he's going to have to kill it off anyway. It could be if he gets taunted or yeah. if it's Shadow Flames or a strong board, yeah. it's going to be impactful. The way you win this matchup as the mid-range hunter is not to rush your opponent down. It's not like Face Hunter where you're just trying to fit in as much damage as possible before they can draw into enough things to stop you. Mm -hmm. It's about controlling the state of the board, slowly building up your own board, weaving in your hero power until you get them low enough and have a board big enough to kill them on a single turn. Uh, there are opportunities that you have early on sometimes where you can rush your opponent down. But with mid-range, it's, it's not usually about that. Hmm. Sort of plays like Druid in a sense. In the ways that you're just like controlling the, trying to control the board, trying to avoid big power turns, and then killing them in a single turn. But instead of having medium-sized boards with a uh, combo, you have slightly larger boards with cards like Kill Command. 
Kill Command Hero Power Weapon, Kill Command Hero Power Quick Shot. You know what that's kind of like? It's kind of like Patron War. <laughs> Every deck's kind of like Patron War in a way. Your mom's kind of like Patron War. Everyone! <laughs> Get in here! I feel like you didn't. <laughs> I feel like you didn't even know where that joke was going until you realized. I, I saw it click in your head. Your response to almost everything I say is, "Your mom's like that." And then I saw the moment where it clicked in your head that you could I'm have that joke. Up, TJ, that was beautiful. Dan is actually leaned back right now with his feet up uh, on the table because I, he's so happy with himself TJ, about that joke. I'm a goddamn poet. And you know it. Savannah High Main comes down. Uh, the load up to answer the load that stalls out the turn. By the way, your mom's a wonderful person, CJ. I don't, I don't mean her any insult. Thank you. Uh, the High Main, though, is problematic because most people have no ways to usually deal with the High Main super effectively. Uh, in this instance, you can remove it. It's just going to cost a lot. Oh, wait, and also the trap. But you don't want to activate because you assume it's freezing trap, right? So yeah. He doesn't know it's a uh, snake trap. The only damage being dealt was when the hunter hit the the ancient watcher with the eagle horn bow. Mm -hmm. So he wants to. Oh man. He can try and block. No. I wonder. The options here are using Iron Beak Owl to silence the. I mean, hedging your bets against the freezing trap or just using Shadow Flame. That seems reasonable. Still hasn't checked the trap yet, but he's hoping that. Well, he Iron wants it on a good target, too. It's like one of those things where Lothep bouncing back is not even that helpful. Things like Sun Free Protector is helpful, uh, heal bots, etc. Well, Tom has kept pretty healthy over the course of this game. Mm -hmm. Oh, and he has things to do, which is a pretty big deal. Yeah. Would you drop Thorson? Would you drop uh, the Mountain Giant? Well, Mountain Giant allows you to tap. Yeah, that's So true. I think that's a pretty big deal. Since you're still really healthy, yeah, you don't have a lot of cards. Great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. Well, Tom agrees as well. Hey, Theodore, what does the Sludge Belcher say when you drop it? I can't really understand half the time. <laughs> You, you don't know either, right? Mm -mm. It's kind of weird. I thought it just made a noise. Pretty sure that's it? Yes, that's what he says. Mm -hmm. I knew I could ask you. Emperor Thorson will reduce all of this to, let's see, one mana on the Ancient Watcher and Sun Fury Protector is pretty huge. But you need to drop it now, I agree. So... What can he do next turn? He can Siphon Soul and Hellfire for 8 mana. And the Mortal Coil for 0, so that might be really useful. Kill Command is... Let's see, he's got 13 taunt. So he's at 30 health, effectively. 17 plus a 13. And he's got 8. It's 21 damage. 10. I wonder. Well, he could unleash the Hounds as well. So 24 right. damage total. 24 damage total at the moment. Not enough to get past everything. Well, he does have enough to completely clear the board if he wanted to. He already used a Shadow Flame, though, so I don't think clearing the board is as a high priority as, as, it, sh as it normally is. Yeah, but you also don't want to sort of, like, wait waste the damage because I don't know if you want to attack into a space and put a lot of damage in for molten giants. There's yeah. a point where you have to. It's a good point. I think you definitely toss in a sludge belcher here though. The second sludge belcher is definitely suspect. Yeah, I, I'm more in favor of keeping that just keto power in. Yeah. He's running out of cards. Quick shot will be a good way to refill his hand. And, and I like this way of doing it. I'm such a fan of the Golden Oasis snap draw. <laughs> it's, like it's like it's trying to talk to me. It's the most awkward golden card. He's trying to tell you that he's about to turn into Mount Ganis. I am a turtle. 
<laughs> that was so good, TJ. I wonder. Oh, TJ, you treat me so right. <laughs> God. Um, no taunt givers. You can tap and play two giants for four mana, so that's six. That leaves them three. That's not good enough. I guess you uh, mortal coil. He chooses not to. Instead, he's going to Hellfire and then see Nuana siphon soul here after he drops the molten giant. Well, if he drop, if he siphon souls, he'll be back up at 15 health with only one power on the board. That seems pretty strong. But is siphon soul worth it on a two four? How much damage could he have? He's used one kill command. It's a two four that. Disables beast, so Houndmaster's not live, Kill Command's not live. Mm -hmm. At least from what he sees. Yep. But you're playing one Mountain Giant, so you might as well throw it on the board. Okay. Looks like he played both in the Ancient Watcher. So three, four, five damage, Kill Command or Huffer? Oh, Huffer! That's seven plus nine. That's lethal. eleven. And that's a quick shot, so that's going to be game. And Hufferino comes to save the day. I think Leoc would have been lethal as well. It'd be so funny if he draws to another quick shot here. Like, quick shot, it's a quick shot. It's a... He's dead! Stop him, Oz! <laughs> Leave him alone! No! All right, well, Moss ties it up one apiece. This is, this is uh, somewhat expected, although, um, you know, if you're Tom and you have the Druid and you have that Warlock, it's like, well, you know, I'm not really feeling uh, too amazing about my chance. Might as well just queue up the Handlock, mm -hmm. which is probably better against Midrange Hunter by a big margin compared to the Midrange Druid. Taking a look at the rest of the uh, lineups here, Amaz has the Warlock Druid versus Tom's Warlock Druid, and I think it's going to come down to a good old Mirror. I don't think Amaz is... He's playing Handlock, right? Uh, Yeah. It most likely. Um, we don't know for sure. But well, in week number like, four, he played Handlock, and that was like a week ago. So he might switch yeah. it up just for the sake of... But I do know he's been pretty busy this week. It's true. So he might have much time to mm -hmm. probably switch it too far out of the, the realm of possibility. You know, it was the Legendary series, I remember, in Season 1, where Amaz also was first bringing Demon Lock and was putting weird stuff like Moger the Ogre. Do you remember? Oh, yeah. It was not a very successful really week stuff. for Amaz. That was fun, though. Yeah, it was. He won one series and then um, and then lost. And mm -hmm. then he got invited back and he couldn't qualify. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Druid versus Druid. Oh, boy. Just like the old times. Yeah, really old times. Well, I don't even know. Druid versus Druid is a matchup that's been in almost every single meta. Druid never dies. The cockroach of Hearthstone. I thought Hunter was like the cockroach of Hearthstone. No matter how many times it survives the nuke bomb or the nerf bombs, it ends up still being resilient, alive, and kicking. And what Druid be? The tortoise? Nature will rise uh, slow and steady wins the race. Always in it, but never at the top. Well, the tortoise wins the race. Druid rarely ever wins, the, like, the top. Mm. That's your job. You need to come up with an analogy before the match ends. I, I can't. I think I can. I'll, I'll come back to you on it, TJ. Okay. All right. Wild growth start for Tom. No wild growth start for Maz. A lot of times the difference in this matchup comes down to small things like that. But Amaz does curve out pretty well. He's got shade, coin shade into, into coin shade. He needs to pick up something to do on turn four. And he is set. Right. That second shade is definitely a really big deal. He at least, bottom line, can Wrath, so he can take out this Drake that will be played. Yeah. I mean, this is almost starting to play itself. Almost the uh, expert AI could take care of this. I think next Ramus is Ooh. ours. Interesting. Now you have Wrath. And then a five drop into Innervate R Ragnaros. Also, I, I think I would lean towards playing Lothab next turn and then hitting with both these shades. Start pushing in the damage, protects the shades by the time he's able to use spells to answer it. 
The shades would be too big to deal with with spells. It'd be a six six and a five five. Oh man. Sylvanas is very problematic though. That is actually so annoying. Shall I strike? Pushes for nine damage. If Sylvanas can't uh, deal with this, then maybe even more. But you can wrath Sylvanas for one. Yeah. But it makes your turn weird. Mm, you can shred her afterwards. Because you'd have to hero power into the Druid of the Claw also. Oh, uh, you're right. Because but what if you steal the Drew of the Claw? I wonder. You don't want to steal the Drew of the Claw. Well, then you can trade and into the four four shade, and then if you hear play pilot shredder. Uh. Yeah, okay. He didn't have keeper last turn. Okay, he's gonna trade anyway. Oh, yeah. Right. So still pretty vulnerable to a swipe, but. It's okay because the pilot shredder makes you pretty resilient. Now Maz is in a little bit of an awkward situation here. Vulnerable to swipe for a single turn. And then all of a sudden it gets out of hand. It's true. Mayhem. Maz might contemplate hero powering down this 5 1 and then innervating out low thug. Or the other way around. I don't think sequencing truly matters here. Nope. But now Tom grabs a pretty convincing lead on the board with an ancient of lore here. Ancient of Lore into a trade. And that, oh my god. Actually, Dr. Boom into face, 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 face is also appropriate because you have combo. A lot of times in this matchup, the first player to get overwhelming board control is the player that wins. And Sylvanas is a great way to do that most of the time. Especially putting your opponent on having Keeper. Amaz also has All Zombie right. Chow. Well, game three is over. That was very quick and systematic. Mm -hmm. And Tom being able to grab this Druid Mirror win is definitely really clutch. Uh, the key is whether or not who wins the Handlock Mirrors. I'm almost certain it's going to come down to that. Yeah. Amaz should be able to navigate a match against Handlock pretty, pretty well, pretty effectively. Once upon a time, Handlock was considered really strong against Ramp Druid, but mm -hmm. since the double combo days, the matchup has just gotten better and better for Druid. So we'll probably see that matchup next, and then, like you said, go into Handlock versus Handlock Mirror. But, you know, we could always be surprised. Yeah. Uh, we say that because Tom's only deck that he needs to win with is Warlock is the Handlock. The Handlock against this Druid might actually be better, though, because Samaz has Zombie Chows and... Um... And Ragnaros. Ragnaros is not always like a very reliable card. Mm -hmm. The mod's queuing it up again. Figures he's you gotta do it anyways. But this is his last chance. If he loses, he is not going to come to the finals. And so far, we have zero players from Archon at the ESL Legendary Series. I'm sure they can compete in the North American Last Chance qualifiers. Yeah. But still, important to note. Mm hmm. Not mm. as uh, as as easy as you know we can say it is. You can't just like oh I want to sign up and I'm just going to qualify easy peasy. There's going to be a lot of good players signing up for that call. There's another North American land that happens four days prior to the Legendary Series land finals, the World Cyber Arena North American Qualifiers, that has three out of the four players so competing are our comp players. It's true. So they're going to be here anyways, but it'd be quite a tragic if they're not able to benefit off of that and just stay over for the ESL land. Yeah. Well, here we go. Not the best hand. Keeper the Grove is actually pretty good, but he's going to throw that away. No wild growth. No wild growth, but a Keeper of the Grove is pretty nice. He threw a Keeper of the Grove away. He just wants the wild growth that aggressively. Yeah. It is really important in this matchup. Because if you get your, turn, your shade out of turn later, sometimes that makes a big difference. Yeah, it's the difference between surviving Hellfire sometimes, but yeah, with two Drakes in a row, it's most likely going to be Coin Drake into Drake. And then Amaz is going to silence the first Drake, uh, but at least the Drake can trade into the Keeper of the Grove. Mm -hmm. And then the second Drake will be really hard to deal with. Yeah, we'll have to use the Shade and something else like a Swipe. Oh, or... Innervate is excellent. Yes, it is. Two, four.
still a. He doesn't curve out very well though. Pollen Shooter is great because it's it six on the board a lot, but. Uh, well, he's got Harrison next turn. Harrison just seems weak. I mean, it's something on the board though. Yeah. <clears throat> and you're not. The game's not going to go to the point where you're going to Harrison Drax. Yeah. Pilot Shredder, because he keeps the Harrison. It's also more resilient on the board. He just used Hellfire. These He's, guys are playing yeah. so fast. Yeah. Amaz was in, when he competed in week number four, he was playing unusually fast. Well, seems like he hasn't changed his pattern. Mm -mm. This is actually pretty good to reduce the cost of swipes, because it opens up Double that direct swipe. damage. Yeah. Yeah. He draws into a Savage Roar, all of a sudden he's looking at lots of burst in the next coming turns. Boist. Is that what you call it over where you're from, TJ? Lots San of boist. Diego? Yeah. Vitality totem. Us San Diegans were just so exotic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are. Oh, uh, well, no. Big Game Hunter, now that Siphon Soul has been used. I think Amaz somewhat appreciates the health, but he'd rather have a minion. What a draw! From Tom60229, I told you, TJ, I had a feeling we have two Taiwanese players that might be coming. Yeah, the top shelves for Tom are pretty Double stacked so far today. Mozzie needs some help from these boom bots. For sure. Well? He's got combo, though. Okay, now he's got to start thinking about how this all pans out. He swipes, sets up for combo. And he can even like evaluate a boom bot and play Harrison Jones. Uh, mm. Slightly awkward. But he can attack the face for one and play Harrison Jones, and then um, the Milton Giants can't get taunted. It can only be played for. Oh, he can. It's going to be six. So you probably would hold on to this attack from the boom bots. Yeah. All right, whatever. Sunfury Protector has to be the card. Instead, it's Sludge Belcher. And then he plays nothing else. Kills off the Sunfury Protector. So there's 21 damage worth of combo. Pretty risky. Can he, I don't I, think that's death, though. He can't split up the damage enough right. to get through a Sludge Belcher. Because he'd have to throw at least four damage into a 1-2. Which is not ideal. And he just goes ahead and Siphon Souls. So I guess you could just play Druid of the Claw in Taunt mode. Because I don't... I mean, if you hit Charge mode... You're asking for trouble with Molten Giants. Hmm. You have 20 damage next turn, and if he has Farseer, you can still kill him if he hits the 20. But Farseer is kind of rotated out. Yeah. If he has Heal Bot, you don't kill him, though. Mm -hmm. If you hit him down to 13, he can play two Molten Giants and a Sun Fury. If he hmm. taps, he can play two Smoltens and a Argus. Strike? So he chooses to go for... The conservative approach, which is the right choice. But now that's an opportunity for Tom to play Mountain Giant plus the, uh, well, I guess Lotheb. I was, I was going to say any five drop that involves him being defensive. Lotheb, Sludge Belcher, Heal Pot. Yeah, and he can spread those out across the next couple turns, and every turn just continue right. to play around combo. Now this is just, it feels like Amaz has been locked out of the game. I don't know if he's going to be able to push through. His window of opportunity to close out to to win is slipping away. It is. He's like, next turn he can play Sludge Belcher, Heal Bot, go back up to 24 health, have a taunt. Right. Um, he can even just get lower, um, play Molten Giants, build a wall with Sludge Belcher, and then heal afterwards. This doesn't feel good at all. Nope. Amaz swipes off the Lotheb, but if he attacks into the face, he's just going to invoke the wrath of Molten Giants. But there's a Mountain Giant already waiting on the other end. So how do you win? And he's also got the Heal Bot, which is so key. 
He has to draw a like, double combo and then Emperor Thor's hand to reduce it. And then finally a turn where you can yeah. double combo, push through a wall, and win on the same turn. Which is highly unlikely, considering if he gets dead draws over the next couple turns, Tom can not only play defensive, but he's also building up lots of damage as well. So he's going to be starting yeah, to put Amaz on a clock. There's almost no way for Amaz to win this. Yeah. Um, the double giant taunt is just like way too much. Yeah. And uh, this is just completely pushing him out. Handlock has gotten so strong. He needs Big Game Hunter. Like, that Big Game Hunter is his last sort of chance to come back in the game, but even then, it's still going to be really tough. Yeah. I mean, how's he going to get through that sludge filter? Okay. Ancient of Lore is a pretty good draw, but that's 23 damage. Yeah. The Hellfire kills him. Hellfire Dark Bomb. Oh, uh, no. He's got Draxus. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Draxus. Draxus. Draxus right? Yeah. And uh, that's going to wrap it up. Tom, 6 0 2 2 9 goes to the finals, and Amaz quickly gets pushed out, even though he does get seeded for his great play in week four. <laughs> and Tom, I'm telling you, man, we're going to see two Taiwanese players yeah. go to the finals. They work really, really hard. You know, everyone talks about some of the Western players who do work hard, but these Taiwanese players are they, they're, they're putting in the time for sure. They're getting rewarded. Yeah, Tom's had some really great matches so far. 3-1 in his first match, 3-1 in his second match, or might have been 3-0 in his first match. Um, no, 3-1. So that's really great stuff from him. We'll be seeing him in the finals. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, like you said, Amaz won't be joining us for that mm -hmm. land. But, uh, but he plays the winner between Oskaka and Limmy Jux. Limmy Jux. Limmy Jux. Yeah, I'm going to have trouble with that one. Yeah. It's an anagram of his name. His name's I, I Jim Lu. I might Lou. force him to change his name if he comes to land. <laughs> Or at least move one of the eyes. Yeah. His name is Jim Liu, so it's an anagram, and then he added an X on the end. Yeah. Jim, and then his last name is L-I-U, so it's just... Yeah. It's, it's just, like Raynad. If it Raynad's name was Raynad X. I think you shouldn't force him to change his name. You should force Raynad to change the name to Raynad X. I think the, the second I really just kind of throws me off. Yeah. I'm not sure. But either way, that's coming up next, guys. Uh, and that's going to be our second to last match. Mm-hmm. Day's yeah. gone by really quick. It's only 3 p.m. Yeah, really. It's uh, two hours for three best of five so far. It's been our quickest match. But, of course, we have two matches left to go today. The second semifinals and the final. So that matchup between Limmy Jux and Oskaka is going to happen right after this break.